What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. I'm actually super excited about this video today because it's something we've not really done on the channel ever before. If it goes down well, I'm hoping to potentially turn it into a little mini series. So if you do enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like button below and let me know what you think in the comments. Today, we're gonna look into the urban myth slash shark legend that is submarine. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts on whether this monstrous shark was real or not. Now, just a little side note here, I have already already recorded this video once before, but somehow drunkenly managed to turn off the microphone midway through the recording. So I've had to do it all over again. Here are the beers that I drunk in the first recording. <laughs> so basically it just means you're gonna get a slightly more drunk shark science episode. Enjoy. <laughs> so the urban legend that I'm talking to you about today is Submarine, a supposedly massive great white shark that terrorized fishers in South Africa back in the 1970s and 80s. Why is this one warm? <laughs> Ah, submarine was slash is slash may be a great white shark that inhabited the waters of False Bay in South Africa about 30 to 40 years ago. False Bay has been an area where great white sharks have frequented for years and years, and it's also a really popular place for cage diving. But before they were protected back in 1991, it was a really popular place for shark fishing. Interestingly, in recent years, the great white sharks of False Bay have seemingly vanished and shark scientists don't really know why this has happened. But that's a tangent. Don't let me go off on a tangent already. Anyway, back before they had protections, people used to go out game fishing to see who could catch the biggest shark. It was basically just a big competition for game fishers back then, and that was what people used to do in the 70s and 80s. It was a different time, and people had different views on sharks back then. Now, the thing about Submarine was that this was no ordinary sized great white shark. Supposedly, she was in the region of 25 to 35 feet long. <laughs> 35 feet long. <laughs> now, before I delve into those size estimates, we've got to take a little bit of a closer look into how this myth actually started. Back in 2014, Shark Week decided to kick off its listings with this absolute peach of a program entitled Shark of Darkness, Wrath of Submarine. This was a two hour documentary looking into the eyewitness accounts of people who had supposedly battled with submarine at the end of their fishing lines and also contained some expert opinions of shark scientists working in the area. But the previous year, Shark Week had already done a fake documentary called Megalodon, The Monster Shark Lives. And this had really pissed off a lot of shark fans. It was so obviously fake. And please, for the love of God, if I get one more person coming and telling me that Megalodon might still be alive, I am going to scream. <laughs> okay, I don't need to scream anymore. The problem with the Shark Week submarine documentary is that, again, it was a complete hoax. Take a look at a clip here from the documentary of a supposed marine biologist who is working with great white sharks in South Africa. Conrad Manis is a marine biologist with over a decade of experience studying great whites here in Cape Town. Conrad Manis. Con man. Damn it, guys. You gotta open your eyes. <laughs> All of the people who featured in this documentary were of course paid actors, from the scientists to the eyewitness accounts, all fake. So this is what happens when you get a multi-million dollar TV company creating a fake documentary about a really, really big great white shark. People are gonna buy into it and believe it and the myth propagates until a large proportion of people actually believe that it's real. Now, just because Shark Week did a fake documentary on this doesn't mean that Submarine is or wasn't real. I mentioned earlier to you about the size estimates of Submarine where people were claiming that it was somewhere between 25 and 35 feet long. These are huge estimates. And if they were true, it would make Submarine the largest great white shark ever recorded. The issue here is that these are only estimates and are probably based off sightings from the safety of a small boat or fishing vessel. Back in the 70s and 80s, those who claimed to have seen submarine were likely fishing off these small vessels. And I can tell you it is incredibly difficult to accurately measure the size of a shark when it's in the water. If that boat is fairly small and almost level with the water, the sharks can often appear significantly bigger than they actually are. <music> Thank you. 
Generally speaking, the largest great white sharks are coming in somewhere around 20 feet in length. I know there is, of course, Deep Blue, who was filmed a few years ago, but even she wasn't accurately measured. And so it's only an estimate that she was about 21 feet in length. Now, there's going to be some people coming at me at this point in the video talking about indeterminate growth, which is where sharks continually grow throughout their lives. So, yes, this is true to an extent. <music> Sharks, including great whites, do continually grow as they get older, which means that the bigger ones generally are also the older ones. Where's my bottle opener? <laughs> anyway, in great whites, this growth tends to slow down considerably by the time they reach sexual maturity. But one of the main factors that influences their growth is habitat and environment. These large sharks have to eat lots of food to be able to sustain being that kind of size. Great whites are ambush predators, so can you actually imagine a 35 foot great white shark being able to accurately take down an even more agile seal, let alone loads of them? It's just not going to happen. If we take a look at some of the larger sharks in our oceans, for example, the whale shark or the basking shark, these sharks can easily reach the sizes quoted here, i.e. 35 feet plus. But the reason for it is that it's really easy for them to eat lots of food because they filter feed on small fishes and plankton. Their environment and their life histories, including their diet, has allowed them to reach those kind of sizes. When you compare that to a great white shark who feeds on prey that's considerably harder to catch, it becomes incredibly unrealistic that they'd actually be able to reach those huge sizes. It just isn't really feasible for them. So when we look back at the story of submarine, we have to take into account a whole bunch of different factors as to why the myth started in the first place. And I think I probably got an answer for you. I mentioned earlier back in the 70s and 80s that shark fishing was a pretty lucrative business. People would pay thousands to charter a fishing vessel to go out and catch a great white shark. And it almost became a competition to see who could catch the biggest one. When you think about it that way, what better way to drum up business than to exaggerate the size of the potential catches that these game fishers could claim? If you're a game fisher visiting South Africa in the 70s and 80s, you'd pay a lot of money to go out and try and catch a 25 to 30 foot great white shark, wouldn't you? So that paired with unreliable estimates from relatively small fishing vessels and knowing a little bit about great white shark biology, I can pretty much guarantee that submarine unfortunately wasn't real or at least she wasn't 25 to 35 foot long. I don't doubt people probably witnessed some pretty big sharks in False Bay back in the day, and they probably seemed bigger than they actually were. But unfortunately for all you submarine fans out there, sadly, I don't think she's real. Or is she? <laughs> no, she's definitely not. So there we have it, guys. You've got the story of submarine straight from the shark scientist's mouth. Now, I know there's going to be a bunch of you watching this video who've got some pretty strong opinions about submarine. And if so, I want to hear all about them in the comments below. Also, if you want to hear about more shark myths and legends, then let me know in the comments which one you think I should do next. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Mike channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.